this is Rob Powell, and today in Tax Turbo Talks we're talking to Christopher Jill Jensen of Nutton Scott about the team's alternative racing calendar. Alright, welcome, it's a new episode of the Tax Turbo Talks. Welcome and thanks for tuning in. Uh, obviously today we would have loved to be talking about the first monument of the season coming up this weekend or about Tirreno Adriatico but due to the developments around the COVID-19 virus uh, the racing calendar looks a little bit different these days it looks clearly empty actually uh, but we're going to talk about an alternative calendar with a rider whose team acted quite early upon the current race situation and they created their own awesome series of events so we're going to talk about that all with Christopher Jules Jensen of Middleton Scott welcome Chris Chris, how are you? Thank you. I'm good, thank you. I'm good. I'm um, here at home in Copenhagen, uh, enjoying, trying to make the most of uh, of uh, our, this non-racing period like you were talking about in the introduction. Slightly strange, but uh, yeah, it's it's about making making the most of what you control, which is, uh, uh, again, what you what you spoke about. The, luckily for me, I'm on a team that have sort of been proactive when it comes to... Uh, trying to readjust and uh, gives us a little little bit more to uh, focus on now that we're sort of at home and not able to race. So, so what's the what's the situation for you like uh, in Copenhagen uh, with your family? Are you all safe? We are uh, safe and sound. Uh, I think uh, Copenhagen is similar to, to more or less every other country uh, at the moment. But we've, uh, we've to be honest, in the, uh, we've, we've tried to stay away from to, even though we live in the heart of Copenhagen, we've the Danes have have been pretty pretty good at uh, sticking to uh, you know the what's been suggested and advised. So there's there's not many people out in the streets, and we've more or less stuck to ourselves up in the apartment. And uh, now that our 16 month uh, daughter, she's she's obviously out of daycare, um, then we've sort of uh, enjoyed it as best we could. And I think uh, again. Um, I've I've had the bike set up on the tax, ready to go on the Swift, which uh, I think my daughters find uh, rather amusing. But uh, we've uh, we've actually we've enjoyed it so much. I think if, if you can if you if you can ignore too much news and um, too many uh, media stories, then I think it's 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 not it's not too bad. But it is obviously a very serious and a rather tragic uh, series of events that's that's taking place right now across the world. Yeah, certainly. Do, do you still manage to uh, to get outside for a couple of rides as well, or is it all indoors for you at the moment? Well, actually, um, I've been able to. Um, Denmark haven't exactly banned uh, outside activities, and uh, I, I train by myself here in Copenhagen. Copenhagen, anyway, so it's it hasn't really affected my my training yet. So I've uh, I've actually tried to to train uh, as 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 hard and uh, as best I could in terms of simulating a a Paris Nice which was on my program so with a combination of riding on the uh, on the tax and riding in uh, swift but also riding a, a good bit on the road then I've 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 actually managed to, to clock up a good good few kilometers and a good few hours here last week where I've more or less just ridden as if I were doing my own stage race just racing against myself so uh, so yeah it's, it's actually been an interesting approach to to training especially first of all we're not I'm not used to uh, a training program like this at this time of year because obviously I'd be racing and when I'm home you'd, I'd typically be recovering before the next race um, so so yeah it's, it's been about make, making the most of it and then I've I think I've, it's made a big difference uh, for for how the riders on this team Mitch and Scott have sort of approached this uh, first part of the non-racing period with, with the Swift because um it sort of kept things a little bit fresh, you know, kept us on our toes and have, has meant that we've, we've actually been quite busy with uh, communication on, on WhatsApp and, uh, you know, talking with, with the team and with the coaches and the DSs as to how we approach our, our alternative Swift program. And I actually find it uh, quite enjoyable because it takes your mind off the fact that we can't race. Yeah, like you said, you're supposed to be in Paris Nice, uh, or at least you would have finished it yesterday if it had all gone to plan. Uh, did you still manage to follow some of it? To be honest, I didn't um, because I, I I I was I was pretty bu- you know busy with with uh, staying on top of my own uh, daily program, and um, 
I wouldn't say I boycotted the race, but because uh, you know all teams were entitled to to race if they chose to. But I I I certainly I, I was of the the opinion that it was best not to race. Um, yeah, and I was I was very fortunate. I'm fortunate and happy that that our team management, uh, you know, it looked looked slightly uh, slightly further than uh, you know cycling itself but also in terms of the general public and the 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 signal it would send to to stay at home rather than potentially risk spreading the virus or having one's rider and staff uh, contract the virus and be stuck in in France so that meant I sort of I sort of focused more on my own training race which I I like to call it and then also the swift uh, where the where the it's a bit of a tongue twister where the world rides uh, this series, which uh, the team has organized with with Bike Exchange, one of our sponsors. So, uh, so yeah, I actually I actually didn't focus uh, concentrate too much on on Pyrenees, but more on on my own uh, little race here at home. <laughs> <laughs> and you still managed to uh, get some uh, decent TSS scores, as I saw on your Instagram that you had like from the first from that training camp in January with some monster rides and some monster TSS scores for the. Uh, for, for the training junkies, uh, yeah, amongst us. Um, so you managed to get a, a couple of big scores in as well this week, then with your own simulation. Yeah, I, I did. I did indeed. I think uh, my 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 goal, um, my 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 coach on the team, Mark Quad, he sort of he's pretty good at keeping it simple. Uh, and uh, where where the result at the end of the day has to be is, uh, you know, accumulate as, as many a, uh, minutes in in you know in the high racing zone as possible. Um, and for me. That, uh, that sort of also makes it a little bit more interesting because then you go out and you just sort of uh, race against yourself. Um, and there, uh, yeah, I've I've had a, a good few days over 300 TSS and in the space of, of five hours. So I think if, if when I start out like that at the beginning of the week, then it's just a question of trying to beat yourself for each day you go out. Um, so um, so I clocked up a good few solid sessions. Um, and likewise on, on on the Swift, I. I um I was pretty I, I was pleasantly surprised at how much fun it was, uh, but also how how uh, how caught up in, in the Swift world I, <laughs> I got. So uh, my the easy day I had, I chose to do in the Swift, but it, it certainly wasn't as easy as it, it should have been because I sort of got caught up in the whole Swift universe. But it was great fun, and um, I really can start to understand the, the the hype around riding a Swift, especially something that surprised me was. How clever the you know the graphics and the, the the technology in the in the in the neo tax trainer because I was I I, I wasn't expecting the bike to shake you know as far but wow <laughs> cobbled bridges and gravel roads is is incredible sitting there in my sitting room with my laptop and my <laughs> and my tax and then it all started to shake as if I was going through a forest and I was on the fourth floor of my my apartment. So I actually found that pretty cool. That's it's, 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 I'm 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 pretty happy that the team have been so proactive and sort of gotten us all amongst us um, with this whole Swift campaign. You you didn't get any complaints uh, from the neighbors, obviously, because the tax is so quiet. I assume. Well, I, I, she, I don't think she she doesn't notice the tax. I think she more noticed my my daughter banging stuff on the floor. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I think uh, when I. When I got my tax, the the neo, it was it it made a life for my for my neighbor down, downstairs a lot easier because uh, it's it is like you said it's it is pretty quiet so um, there's there's not much uh, stress there and then with the massive sweat mat then uh, I haven't destroyed our floors either because uh, it just yeah, I've got a pretty sweet setup at home actually so it's and with the Scott being such a nice bike then. Uh, I'm, I'm more or less just let it sit there, and my, even my wife thinks it's, it's pretty nice a uh, piece of furniture. <laughs> were you quite surprised with the amount of sweat that you were doing indoors, or not? Well, uh, no, no, yes and no. I mean, I have to say that um, before I, I'm, I'm rather new to Swift because I've, I've had a bit of an old school approach to, to using the, the, the tax and the, and training at home. But having said that, then when if i you know if i were to look back at my my training peaks and my and how i trained throughout the winter especially being you know permanently situated in copenhagen then uh, i actually like having the, my my winter training more or less focused around uh, training indoors because it it means that i'm not i'm not too stressed if the weather was to turn pretty grim 
of course now it's, with climate change there's not really any winter anymore so we don't have snow but it's been a wet winter in in, in Denmark so I, I I've actually spent the majority of my uh, t- hours on the bike in November and December on the tax um, so I'm used to the, the the massive sweats indoor sweat sessions um, but I've enjoyed it and I, I actually find that I, I come out of my winter period going really well especially as we have our monster camp, which is more or less like doing a, an early 10, 12 day uh, stage race, if not a little bit harder, you know, then it's sort of, it even that with, with uh, not doing too many hours, November, December, but getting them later on the bike in January, February. So, uh, no, yeah. so I, I spend a lot of hours on my tax in uh, November, December for sure. But just from now on, because I, I may have had a little peek at your at your Swift profile, and I saw you were only on level three. So there, there might be some more Swifting coming up to get you up a few levels. I, I think uh, this this <laughs> week I, I have a, uh, especially if the, if the country shuts down further, you know, it could be a good opportunity. It, it's my recovery week slash Swift week, so it could be a good opportunity to sort of really start to understand the whole. Uh, you know, the the idea behind, you know, the levels. Of, sometimes I feel like I've been running in a Super Mario world with uh, <laughs> unlocking certain, you know, climbs and this and that. And I, 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 I really need to get get a, get on a, you know, get, get on top of, uh, of what I need to achieve. <laughs> and uh, maybe maybe talk with Matthew Heyman, Swift ambassador of the world, really, um, on, on how I best do this whether I just have to go out and, and smash some swift rides to, to get as many gold coins as possible. And, and obviously you as a team, uh, I think there's still quite a few events on the calendar where, where you can join in. Obviously also uh, other people can join in. Uh, I think it all started, was it last Sunday when already 1,300 people joined uh, joined you guys, 30 riders of the of Mitchell and Scott team for the first ride of the what you guys call it, the Bike Exchange Where the World Rides series. Um yeah, we, absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm we, up on we, uh, my my uh, my days are. I certainly know that I, I I've got some events on Wednesday and Thursday um, for all those who, who want to join. Um, and then I think it's it's pretty busy, more or less every day. Um, we get sent out a a, a pretty well pro, well planned program, which is planned by the team, not just by the media management, but also by you know obviously by the the sports directors and the coaches, because I think the team have really realised that that uh, it's it's a lot of fun, but it's also actually a lot of serious fun and serious work. And I think it's something that, uh, that again, just shows how uh, proactive our team has been, that they, they, they didn't really spend too much time sitting around complaining or or uh, moping around about not being able to race because um, it, it'll this corona uh, crisis will eventually blow over and then we'll sooner or, la- sooner or later be, be racing. And in that, in that time beforehand, we... we we're going to have to keep active and make it a little bit interesting and different. Um, and this is what this, this, this Swift uh, bike exchange series helps with. And I think it's a fantastic way of, first of all, us riders, you know, we're, we're placed all, all over the world, all over Europe. We can ride together and we can also communicate with the fans, which we typically aren't able to do during the season. You know, obviously you can, you can go for a ride and you can ride with some sponsors and some fans, but, it's always a little bit tricky, especially during the season. And now it's it's sort of a free for all. Um, you can join the team, and uh, you can get amongst us, and uh, you can even ride a Scott. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. Because hey, we're recording this today, it's a, it's the Monday, the sixteenth of March, and like you said, you're back on Wednesday. So that's the Midgeton Scott Pro Workout. I uh, just peeked at the calendar, and there's yeah, another. Exactly. Uh, there's like a, a mountain goat challenge with Amanda Spread going on on Thursday, or, and Simon Yates's Space and Race Challenge. Um, yeah. If you would, if if there would be like a workout named after uh, Chris Juliensen, uh, what would it look like, and what would it be called? I, I think uh, it would probably be so. Uh, it, would, it would probably be a bit of a, a, a V or two. Uh, I, actually, my coach calls it the JJ special. Um, when I, whenever I have one of them on the, on the programs, and I sort of know what I'm in for, where I have to sort of go out and accumulate as many many minutes over 500 watts, but I can sort of do it in whichever way I want. So I usually spread it out with, you know, a lot of 10 minutes where I do 30, 30, 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off, or 20 tens for 10 minutes or 40 20s for 10 minutes 
Um, and I'd probably, yeah, I'd probably throw that into an hour session on the on the home trainer. Um, and then maybe also look through my, my training peaks uh, from, from December and, and, and add a few other intervals that my, my, my coach has sort of <laughs> tormented me with the last couple of weeks. Uh, and then see how see how people go. Uh, it's you know it's a fine line between making a, a a pretty filthy hard session, but also you know making it exactly not too hard. So you actually, you sort of in, in a weird freaky way look forward to doing it because it's only an hour or so, uh, and you know okay you can get through it uh, without having to vomit on the floor. Um, a bit like when you eat chili, it it it's weird and it, it <laughs> you think why the hell am I eating this spicy the chili but then afterwards you're like oh that was actually i'll do it again for some weird reason and it's the same with cycling you have to sort of find that fine line between it's hurting a lot but you sort of get addicted to it so I'd, I'd probably do that make a session that people just yeah they they hurt themselves so much but they 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 at the same time enjoy themselves that much that they just keep doing it <laughs> which is a win-win win-win for swift tax and for people's general sort of condition I think we need the JJ uh, special on the next uh, on the next calendar of yeah. events from Mitch and Scott. Uh, I'm not sure <laughs> if people still uh, still dare to join if it's going to be as much uh, minutes over 500 oh, watts as possible. Would, but would, everyone to everyone to their own program. level, and then <laughs> it'll be a reasonable program, a program that people will be able to sort of uh, adjust to their own level for sure. All right. <laughs> um, you even had like the commentary at the, at the races yet uh, or at the workout yesterday. I saw from Matt Heyman and, and Matt Stevens and. Um, you enjoyed that a bit of row as, as well as your daughter yeah. did. I thought it was a, again. It's a, it's a, it's another great way of uh, of interacting, communicating uh, within the team and uh, with the the entire cycling uh, you know uh, fan base. Um, if you if you're able to sort of ignore the fact that it's it's not a Pyrenees, not a pro tour race, then it's still at the end of the day to, pros from the, the best women's team and the best men's team riding their bike to their, you know, uh, in a serious manner. Um, and uh, it's being commentated by, by Matthew Heyman and, and Matt Stevens. Uh, so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, and it also, I, I, I thought it, it gave a pretty good insight to, to how the, the Yaces, they, they ride when, um, you know, they just, they just go out and hammer it. And they, I, I think Matt Heyman had some pretty cool, uh, comments to how many watts per kilo they can ride and, and it, it was a good way of seeing that at Swift even when you're climbing actually you actually are riding a climb it's, it's amazing um, so I think uh, it'll, it'll only get better from here uh, really because the teams if you think about it, like you said the team's just been uh, has only been doing this for a week with a, with a couple sessions a couple of bike exchange series and um, I think for every time they, they we do one they they, they, they realize wow there's, there's heaps of potential here so why not uh, keep uh, keep developing? Because it seems like we've got plenty of time, <laughs> plenty of time at the moment to sort of be creative. Um, and you know, now the riders in Spain they're being encouraged by the government not to not to leave their home. So I mean, there's a there's a lot of time to um, to sit indoors on your tax and uh, sort of be part of the the Swift universe. And then I'm sure that uh, when the next couple of months are up we'll be more or less as fit as we should have been with with the um, the only exception is that we haven't been racing is there is there been some banter on the group app on the group chat about the watts per kilogram or is there someone who is absolutely surprised and turned out to be like a beast on the trainer i think um uh, the, the banter is slowly winding up for sure um i think a week ago we were like yeah okay let's let's first try and uh connect into this massive group ride and see how we go uh but i, I think definitely now that we've, as when we start racing and doing more specific training sessions there will be a there will be a bit of a, a bit of intern competition which is probably the healthiest kind of competition is comparing uh, <laughs> yourself to your teammates um and then it'll be interesting to see if we're we're all honest and make sure that we we, we type in the right weight which is another good uh, you know another good initiative to <laughs> To stay lean during this period, um, yeah, to make yeah. sure that you uh, you get some good uh, swift numbers up on the screen. And and have you mastered the the texting and and writing at the same time yet? 
That that is actually a good. Uh, I I wouldn't mind uh, getting some tips as to how to master this because I get I can I can write a lot of messages in the first three four or five minutes, but then when I start sweating, it's just I find it pretty difficult. Um, I I use my phone. I don't really know how how to do it otherwise. But it uh, otherwise yeah, I don't I've... know if you need like special Swift gloves or like a Swift case. It's uh, I'd like to know actually. Uh, maybe I suspect sometimes someone has their partner standing next to them and sending the text for them. Maybe. S- say that again. Maybe you could use that like as a little trick next time when you're already pushing a lot of watts and then just have your wife standing next to you and sending the yeah. text for you. <laughs> well, I, I think if I if I'm going to do that, she would be my wife for very long. <laughs> I, <laughs> I think I'd be I'd be swifting alone in my in my in my sitting room. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe Swift could like develop a voice vo- uh, voice messaging app. But uh, otherwise, I'm I'm pretty sure that Matthew Heyman will be able to tell me how you do it properly. Uh, All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if we maybe look a bit, hopefully, further ahead when we go out back uh, back on the road again later this year, uh, who knows when? Uh, what would be on your schedule for 2020? Yeah, good question. I mean, at the moment, it looks like my the next and first race could potentially be the tour if I get p- selected. I, I'm, I'm, I'm part of the, the 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 bigger group in contention of of riding the tour. But I mean, at this time, uh, you know, at this in this period, it's 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 pretty difficult to uh, predict what will be the next race. But let in a, in the perfect world, you know, if if this uh, if if this peaks maybe a little bit quicker than we we are, people are, are afraid of then i would i would i would be doing the ardennes and then um i'd be focusing towards uh, uh, a tour de france uh, possible tour de france selection but um yeah i've also heard that we may not be racing until june so that that may mean that you know you 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 take the riders that should have been doing the, the should have been doing the giro and, men, and many other races in that period uh, you also throw them into the Tour de France mix, which will make it even more interesting, um, because all, all of a sudden there may be twice as many or even more in um, contention for for a spot, which will make the Tour de France, if it goes ahead, a very interesting race because it'll it'll definitely be the team's uh, number one squad if if nobody has raced until then. You know, then they've got a lot to. You know, a, a lot of riders to to choose from. But yeah, um, to answer your question, I I hope it's, you know, it'll be you know that summer period of racing, which is typically Swiss, Dauphiné, Tour de France, and then we'll see with the Olympics. That's another one that uh, has a massive question mark over its head. <laughs> yeah, you were there, there in 2016, also, I mean, weren't you? By 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 the time we get to to June, there may also be pro cycling stats. Swift points to to be had, and we all we we all be you know keenly trying to 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 win as many Swift races as possible. <laughs> you never know. That, that, would, that would be pretty cool if they eventually connect yeah. that. <laughs> all right. Okay. Well, I just want to thank you for your time uh, for today, and uh, we're definitely going to see you out there on one of the rides of the Bike Exchange Where the World Rides series. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and, and I'm really. Uh, I'm, if you're gonna put on the JJ special, then uh, I'm I'm gonna join you for it. I, I'll see uh, I'll see what I come up with uh, the next couple of weeks. There's certainly a lot of time to try and uh, work out something. I, I think the team were we're pretty good at brainstorming different ideas. So I think this, despite there being no races, then cycling fans can can be assured that there will be plenty of activity on the Mitchell and Scott uh, social media platforms to follow the the Swift program. I think we're we're going to be uh, pretty busy uh, and pretty pretty uh, active so we won't we won't be sitting on the sofa complaining about not having anything to do that's for sure all right awesome we're going to follow all of that uh thanks chris thanks for joining us cool. and uh no st- stay safe and uh, a lot of uh, safe kilometers on the swift definitely and definitely and uh, yeah thanks for creating a, a pretty cool machine like the tax <laughs> Awesome, you're welcome. All right, well, uh, thanks, thanks you for listening to this episode of the Text Turbo Talks. Don't forget to share it with your friends and to provide them some entertainment in these days without the outdoor racing. But like we said, plenty of entertainment on Swift and on your text. This was Rob Powell with Chris Jensen from Mitchelton Scott. Stay tuned for the next Text Turbo Talks.